if to back up the the models that we're working with as clinicians are incomplete and outdated and, and just insufficient to in my opinion my experience to to account for the phenomena that we're seeing every day first of all physics modern modern physics as it's you know as it's taught and, and what's acceptable in in the literature as far as modeling is essentially as i see it a, a, a dead universe there is no accounting for consciousness for, for life as we know it uh, we have you know sentient physicists all agreeing that our best understanding of the universe in no way explains sentience it's incomplete and there are, are those who are talking about that and, and modeling at a higher order level of modeling that includes descriptions of, of, of thought and consciousness. Uh, you know, at the most basic level would be sort of the, the, the biological electronic model that says that, that maybe consciousness is just an epiphenomenon. It's just sort of, a, sort of a side effect of the movement of the electrons which, if we, if we can think integratively between physics and biology, those electrons are at a certain quantum energy level. If they're free electrons, they've escaped the or orbitals of, of an atom, and they're now more or less free. I mean, there's quantum entanglements, so they're never completely free. They're always absolutely tied to a particular, uh, in particular pairs, an electron and a positron, and... Uh, there's these pairings that, that when particles appear, they appear in pairs. And when they disappear, whether they're together or apart, they disappear in those same pairs. I, in my model, those are two wings of one angel, one consciousness, one thought of the creator. Uh, so, so electrons are, are many things, many functions from a clinical point of view. They are the ultimate antioxidant. What is an antioxidant? Definition is an electron donor. So if we have electrons, we don't have to use up our, quote, ant nutritional antioxidants as antioxidants. They can keep functioning as catalysts, cofactors for enzymes. They have other functions. Uh, a photon is energy. It's the basic packet of energy. And it because it's very specific, specifically quantized or specific quantity, it has specific resonance. It can be absorbed by specific substances and not by other substances. Uh, so it has a, a specific communication function and a specific energetic function to uh, transfer energy to uh, different molecule or set, set of atoms or molecules in order to uh, assist them to go through some chemical transformation. Uh, I, I also modeled that the photon and the electron, which when the electron is, is moving about, it's carrying photonic energy within it and can parse that out along the way, uh, that it's essentially carrying the memory of its past. That it knows what it is, certainly. It knows perfectly what it is, knows how to function. You know, a, a magnesium atom, which is composed of electrons and has photonic energy in, in the normal states of matter that we're used to. And uh, uh, it knows exactly how to be magnesium, never forgets. It's a, it's, it's a perfect definition of an angelic function. It's, it's, a, it's creating itself anew every instant uh, and doing that perfectly. No loss over time. It doesn't become, oh, this is an old magnesium. It's, it's <laughs> kind of, it's decaying. It's deficient. It's going to, what, stop becoming magnesium? No. Well, it may transmute into a different atom, cal magnesium to calcium, for example. Studies, uh, Professor Kervron, I have a wonderful little book from like 40 or so years ago. Where he, this professor in Europe collected all the studies that didn't fit in and still don't fit in the conventional literature that, that, that demonstrate very well that, that there's, there's biological transmutation. 
book called Biological Transmutation of the Elements. Uh, and now there's more recent research documenting that, I guess, uh, through maybe study of cold fusion, that they're seeing, the, oh, and, oh, gee, there's cold fusion going on in biological systems. Yes, the, our body has the ability to change one mineral into another, in certain, not just any mineral into just any other. You know, the way God works, the way nature works, is very specific, just like we are unique and specific as individuals. So if I'm, if I'm treating people, I want to treat them individually and uniquely as they are right now, a snapshot in time, not, not even just as they were, you know, when they were born, just looking at their genetics. Well, I know your genetics, so now I know everything about you. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, so, so that's how I see the entire universe, that it's all specific, that magnesium atom has a specific history. In fact, it was part of the human body of, you know, if you calculate it out, we have water molecules, you know, I have a water molecule that was in Nero's body when he was fiddling, you know, probably. <laughs> so what, maybe that's even part of the, the, the antenna system that, that uh, people can experience as a past life memory. Maybe because we're made of these recycled parts, we have these connections to other lives. In my thinking, all past lives are, are, are my past lives. I live in this universe that can't be untangled from itself. It's, it's totally connected. You can't separate me or any, any uh, independent variable from the rest of the universe. Only in our mind can we, and that, but that's a fiction. So we as truth, as biological creations, as spiritual creations, conscious creations, have this ability to create ideation, fiction, thinking which is a reality of its own because it's based on, you know, as the biologists, the, the creative biologists would say, it's, it's uh, you know, maybe it has to do with the electrons moving around, the energetic fields, the, the electromagnetic fields of, of the brain. You know, and usually they'll, unfortunately, in my opinion, in most cases, they, they limit it to the brain that's thinking, well, are we forgetting? We want to, like, stay in our heart and feel, feel. Don't we want to be heart-centered beings? Because and, 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 we can make an awful lot of fiction in our, in our brain. And if we don't check in with our heart, we might be making GMO corn and making the whole world sick, right? Because we can make money. Oh, it's a great idea until we check in with the fullness of, of who we are. And then we find out, you know, yeah. But what's a million dollars if I, if, if I have this, you know, fiction money, funny money, based on doing damage to my fellow wayfarers here on, on this journey. What, what do I leave, you know, what's the end game? When I leave this body, when the spirit body is done here and I've learned all I can learn, have I learned from that? I hope so. I like the saying, the only mistake, only real mistakes are the ones we haven't learned from yet. So there's some mistakes going around the planet, but there are people who need to learn from those. Hopefully they'll have that opportunity. 